All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be hitting up back. Now, full disclosure, I've been suffering from a bit of a cold here the last couple of days. Um, so well, I'm going to have to just see how, how good this goes. But we're going to push just as hard as we can anyway. Um, and uh, we'll do pretty much what we've been doing every other week. So we'll start off with some uh, chest supported dumbbell rows. Then we'll move on to T-bar rows. So we're going to be adding the T-bar rows back in this week after we took them out last week for the fatigue management week. Um, then after that, yeah, we'll move on to some pull-down movements. So weight grip, narrow grip, and then we'll add back in the single arm pull-downs. And then we'll finish off with some seated rows, weight grip and narrow grip seated rows. Let's get to it. That is your chance to be rude. Hey kid. Don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test if only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown they wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Let's say you, you, you've been working out for you know, through a few meso cycles or whatever and uh, you've hit a sticking point on a, on a given exercise. What are some good ways that you can uh, move past, get past that sticking point? Well, one of the ways that I've talked about in the past is using progress plates, but you don't, you don't necessarily have to add weight. In fact, sometimes adding weight 
if, especially if your form's starting to break down with the weight that you're using, odd and weight's not the answer. But what you can do is you can use different intensifying techniques or intensifiers. Um, so the first one of those would be um, four reps. That's the one pretty much everybody knows. And if you've got a spotter, you need a spotter. Like, but if you've got a spotter, they're an easy way to add in. You can add in this, like two, three, even four reps on the set. Now, I find that four reps are most effective whenever you're able to add in. If you're doing like do, if you do two working sets and add in at least three four reps. If you think about it, those three three reps across those two sets represent the best part of an extra set. So they do. So it's an easy way, if you've got a spotter, it's an easy way to um, move past a, you know, to move past a, a sticking point. Four straps are a very, very easy way to do that. Now, as with all intensifier techniques, I wouldn't recommend that you do four straps every week. So I wouldn't. They're there to try and use for a couple of weeks to try and um, make progress on a, a troublesome body part somewhere, somewhere you, you have hit a sticking point and you're just not growing anymore with it. Anyway, let's head up this next set.
All right, so we've got we've talked about um, we've talked about assisted reps, getting a spot whenever you you want to add in an intensifier. Another technique that can you, that you can employ would be drop sets. Now, drop sets are, in my opinion, one of the best ways of, of intensifying an exercise. They're a bit more involved, especially if you don't have uh, a training partner to take the the weight off. Sometimes they're much more involved in that. You can't, if you're using dumbbells, obviously you're going to have to have extra sets of dumbbells and you're going to have to get those dumbbells up into position or whatever um, in order to be able to do the drop set. So they're, they can be more cumbersome, that's one of the downsides. The upside of a drop set is you can pretty much indefinitely extend on the set so you can really, really like push the intensity to the next level. Where with an assisted rep, you're talking you know three or four extra reps per set in total, with a drop set, you could easily do, you know, you get the, say you, you got um, eight, eight reps with the, your top working set, you could get maybe another four or five reps by dropping down and then another four or five reps and then another four or five reps and you can basically do that until you're, you're using essentially body weight. So it's a, they're really, really useful, really, really useful tools to use. One of the, the, the drawbacks, uh, the, uh, another one of the drawbacks, apart from them being they can be a bit more cumbersome to employ, is that they do accumulate, because you're doing so much extra volume, they, they will accumulate more fatigue. Um, but they're really, really useful for, like, just if you want to really hammer, if you want to really hammer a particular muscle, if it's, if it's a, a trouble spot for you, that would be, you know, if you've, you've tried the, the, assi the assisted reps, um, forced reps, and that hasn't helped you, I would suggest then try try drop sets because drop sets they really will up the intensity. So they will. Anyway, let's head on to the next set here.
right, the last intensif intensification technique that I'm going to talk about is one that you don't really hear an awful lot about. It's I call it a reverse pyramid. So, and I do it. You'll, if you've watched any of my chest workouts, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The um, essentially a reverse pyramid is where you pyramid up the weight from your, your you know, we start with a warm up weight and you'll pyramid up to your working set. A reverse pyramid would be to then go the other way. So, you know, go up to your top working set, but then do, you know, two, three, four even extra sets going down the other side. Now, you don't have the good thing about a, a, a reverse pyramid is, again, if you look at my chest workouts, you don't necessarily need to have it on the same exercise. The exercises just need to be similar. So with chest, I'll go up, pyramid up from a, a, a warm up weight up to my, my working weight on a flat, the, the flat uh, dumbbell press. And then on the incline dumbbell press, which is essentially the same movement, you're just doing it at a slight incline. Because you're already warmed up, don't start with a light weight, start with your heaviest weight. And then do essentially nearly like a, a drop sets down, but obviously take the, the required amount of rest between your sets. Um, the good thing about doing, the good thing about using that technique is that you're um, on your, when you're fresh on your second set or your, on the, the second side of the pyramid, when you're fresh or freshest, you're going to be lifting the heaviest weight. Because of that, you're going to get the failure. Then you're going to take a weight that you can handle more easily. You're going to get the failure more quickly with that weight and so on until you get down to the other side. If you were to start with the lightest weight and work your way up, you'd find that you'd probably be able to, in the first couple of, couple of sets anyway, your couple of warm-up sets, you'd be able to get your required number of reps fairly easily or you'd have to add in extra reps. So essentially you're able to get the failure a little bit faster on the lighter weights which makes the it makes the the set as a whole or not the the exercise as a whole more efficient, so it does. Um, in my opinion, there's not too many downsides to to doing a reverse pyramid because you're using it essentially you're using the same sort of weights that you would be using already. You're just putting more stress on the on the muscle earlier on in the exercise rather than later on. So you're you're making the entire exercise essentially much more efficient. So you are. Right, let's head up this last set here. that's going to be it for back. Um, all in all, it was a pretty good workout today, given that last week was a maintenance week and then I had that, um, suffering that little bit of a cold. Um, 
yeah, so it pretty much, I'm pretty happy with how it went. Uh, the inclined uh, chest supported, chest supported dumbbell rows were, uh, I was really happy with those. I managed, um, managed a back offset actually. So I dumped on the top weight that I had been using before and then did a back offset with a, one, one sort of weight down from that. And the reps felt a whole lot, they felt a whole lot better, a whole lot cleaner than what they have done in previous weeks. So really, really pleased with that. And again, the uh, added back in the T-bar rows. Now I didn't go up as heavy in weight as what I have done in the past in the T-bar rows. Um, but pretty happy with the weight that I did use and felt like the reps again were all pretty good. They were pretty clean reps. The uh, single arm, the unilateral uh, pull downs, again, they felt fantastic. They always feel fantastic. I love that exercise. And I did manage to add a little bit of weight back into those. Although I've said in the past, and I'll say it again, I don't, I don't progress those, that particular lift the way I would do with, with some other lifts. Um, and then the, all the, the pull down and roll movements, I stepped down in weight for those, especially the, the seated rows. I, I stepped down quite a bit of weight in the seated rows this week, um, essentially just because I've, I felt myself flagging quite quite badly at the end of the workout, which is to be expected if you're, you know, whenever you're, you're a bit under the weather. Um, but I, yeah, I was fully expecting today to be more difficult than normal. But it turned out that I'm glad that I came in and I did it. The other, the other option would have been to take the, take the, you know, a few days off and just try and get over whatever we cold that I have. But I'm glad that I went, to, that I pushed through it and uh, came out. I think it has been beneficial. It remained to be seen. Doesn't make me worse. Does you know? Do I feel worse in a few hours' time, or do I bounce back from it? You'll, you'll not know until, until that time comes. Unfortunately. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, feed the anabolic algorithm with the comments, shares, likes and subscribes and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.